6TLU on the bench this weekend, a national NC88 receiver. This thing's pretty beat up, pretty rusty. It seems some fun times in its past. It's receiving, but it's extremely weak. I have it on the bench right now. That's full volume. Should be about double that. Band D is about dead. So I'm taking it into the shop, see what we can find out. So when these old boat anchors hit the bench, I kind of have a routine that I follow. First off, I give them a visual. Make sure that all the right tubes are installed. Make sure they're all lighting. And then I go bottom side, make sure that there's not any loose connections, incorrect parts, or dangerously installed parts. Then, once all that's good, I'll check the voltages per the diagram for the radio. That's always a surefire way to tell if you've lost a power supply, open resistor, IF can, etc. Looking under the hood, you can see all the tubes are there. I noticed some green corrosion at the base of the filter cap, but I found out later that they had replaced the cap and just put this cardboard top back on it to look original. The other thing I noticed was, you see this 5Y3? There was a 5U4 in there in its place and that is something I would not recommend because a 5Y3 draws about 2 amps on the filament whereas this monster draws about 3 which can overheat your power transformer and possibly damage it. So here we are bottom side and as I talked about earlier you can see the filter cap has been replaced. What kind of concerns me about it is you look at these wires here and they're kind of routed under this metal flange and there is a possibility that they could short. Somebody did their best, they used some silicone and other things to uh, support it but probably I'll end up installing some terminal boards and clean that up after the repair is over. So here's the two voltage chart and pretty much all the high voltages are fine 150 volt, 190 all those are pretty close to tolerance but what I did notice was like this pin 1 the negative 2 volts over here there's 1.4 volts those voltages are pretty much at zero so there is something wrong just haven't narrowed it down yet so what my suspicions are is every time I see any of these resistors ending in a yellow color band those are always way out of tolerance. So I'm going to go through here and check a few of those. The power resistors all appear to be fine, but those ones with that yellow band, I bet you they're trouble. All right, so let's buzz out some of those notorious bad resistors. They have the third band being yellow. So this one should be 470K. I've got 1.2 meg. All right. Go over here. This one should be 150k. Almost 400k. So as you can see, these things have really drifted up in value. Now here is a little more of a power resistor. This one should be 47k. I've got 91k. So what I'm going to do first off is change these resistors, the ones that I know are that are bad, and then I recheck those voltages that were acting strange. So when you're replacing these components on these terminal boards, make sure to take your lead through, twist it around, crimp it in place. You'll see like on some of the amps that you run across that people just stick the wires through and they solder them, but that does not give you a good mechanical bond. So here's that 150K resistor that measures almost 400K. Well, I'm gonna change him out. I'm gonna show you a few things. First off, just take your clippers, get him out of the way, leaving 
these two pigtail leads. I'm going to show you why I did that in a minute, but first we're going to clean these leads, get the new resistor hooked up. So to ensure a good bond on your solder, you're going to take an X-Acto knife, you're going to scrape those leads until they're nice and shiny. Get that old corrosion off of them. Then we're going to put a bend in these and pigtail in the resistor. And I'll explain why I did that. So same deal on the resistor that you're going to put in. Take your X-Acto, see how it's kind of dull looking? Just kind of roll that resistor around. Shine her up. So as you're pigtailing in these resistors, you can see the little J hooks here and keep them loose. Don't solder them yet so you can rock this resistor. That way you can position him onto the other leads. Okay, same deal. You want to J hook these guys together. Crimp them down so you have a good mechanical bond. And solder them in place. So there's the new resistor installed. You can see I used a 5% tolerance resistor, so this one shouldn't drift. She soldered in place, J-hooked. Now you may say, well, why didn't you just solder that lead right up here? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, yes, this is quicker, and you can make use of the leads that are existing in the radio. But the other thing is, this post is going to IF can. And if you overheat that, it can actually transfer the heat into the IF can and cause damage and I've seen it in the past so I routinely do this especially if it's connected to a critical component such as this alright I spotted another one of those 150k resistors once again it's going to an IF can so you guessed it we'll just clip him out and pigtail on the new one So a couple uh, bad resistors and two weak tubes later, the radio springs to life. Use a good job. I don't mind making uh, uh, cluster bobs and using them. Lots of volume on, now. Uh, innocent Lebanese children. That's what we do in our... To the point of feedback, uh, we don't make which is what you'd expect anymore, from but, an NC88. Uh, we do make weapons and munitions and they're good... And so yeah, it's old and crusty, but it'll probably serve somebody well for another 50 years. Getting down in the Magnolia State. What's the Magnolia State? I don't know, but he's getting down there. Getting down there. <laughs>